Hey guys, Balkan Architect here, and in today's video, I'm going to be talking about wall hacks in Revit. So, placing and uh, modifying walls in Revit can be quite easy. It can be quite an easy process. But when you want when you want to do some advanced settings to those walls, it can get really difficult to get Revit to comply with whatever you're trying to represent. So, for example, in this video, I'm going to be covering how to solve the problem when joining two walls that have different types of layers. The way that these layers interact with with each other and what overlaps uh, with what I'm going to be showing you how to use some of the Revit's advanced tools uh, to set that up properly. Also, we're going to be talking about how openings like doors and windows interact with walls and wall layers. So how can wall layers adapt to openings in the walls? Maybe you want your uh, your thermal insulation to wrap over the structural material where you have the opening so to, so you can have better thermal efficiency for that building. Things like that. Also, I'm going to be showing you how to change the facade uh, brick pattern on walls. So maybe you want to have a different pattern in just one part of the wall. I'm going to be showing you how to do that. So we're going to be covering all of those topics plus a few more extra hacks for walls in Revit. But before I get into that, I would just like to ask you to like this tutorial, it helps me out a lot. And if you haven't already, I suggest you subscribe because I make useful Revit tutorials each week. Also, I make one advanced Balkan Architect course this week. So to check that out, first link in the description takes you to my Patreon. I do these courses each week, they are all over one hour long, so you can check them out there on my Patreon. And also you can find uh, all of my Revit project files. So for for some advanced uh, Revit topics and more in-depth uh, courses, uh, check that link out. Okay, with that out of the way, let's get into the tutorial. So let's get started by starting, of course, a new project. So I'm going to go here to new and then I'm just going to go with the regular architectural template for this demonstration. Select that and click OK. Now here we're starting a new project. I'm going to be using this project later on just to demonstrate something else, but for now let's go with a blank project. Now here I'm going to go with the regular wall tool, or you can use the shortcut WA if that's what you prefer. Now I'm going to go with one of the more complex walls. Now here we have a few of these loaded in with your templates. So let's go maybe with the brick on CMU. Now I'm just going to place this wall like this. Now you're going to notice that you can't see any of the wall layers. So just go down here to your uh, detail level and change it to fine. Now as you can see we have more layers. So once we have all of the layers visible let's add a couple of openings here so we can uh, demonstrate how do openings interact with wall layers in Revit. So I'm just going to go with a regular door just place it like this and then next to that I'm going to go back to the architecture tab go with a window and let's open up the drop menu here and let's select one of the larger windows and then let's place it here. There we go. So we have one window and one door over here. So if, uh, and let me just select this wall and maybe make it a bit smaller, kind of like this. Okay, there we go. So we have a smaller wall segment. Now what I can do is select this wall and then let's go here into edit type. Now once in edit type here under structure you can open up the menu and you get the assembly or edit assembly menu. Now here down below you have edit wrapping. Now wrapping basically means allowing Revit to kind of modify or wrap some of the layers here either when interacting with openings or inserts as Revit calls it or ends. So those are basically the ends of the wall and here we have ends. So basically that's what wrapping means. Now here under all of your layers, wall layers, you have option to check wraps. So let's see how this works. So let's first talk about inserts. So maybe here for the door, as you can see, we have an external layer that is a brick layer. So that's a brick finish for this wall. And let's say we want to wrap it around. So when you come to the door, those bricks will kind of wrap around. So if I just go here to default wrapping, go to inserts, open up the drop menu and then let's find exterior. So that basically means that we want to wrap exterior layers. So I'm just going to check exterior, hit OK, hit apply and OK and there we go. So as you can see all of the exterior layers are wrapping towards the center of this wall. Same thing goes here with the window. 
they're all wrapping towards the center of the window. So as you can see from this uh, demonstration, it will be different for each family or each opening, or as Revit calls it, each insert. So it's going to wrap a bit differently. So here for this door, for example, it's going to go to the center line of this wall. So as you can see, it's not going to the center or basically the line where this structural layer or core layer ends. It's actually going a little bit inside of it. Now, the reason for that is if I just go ahead and take the measure tool here and measure from the edge to the other side, as you can see, the distance is nine, uh, 490 millimeters. You can see that over here. So if I hold it here, it's 900 or it's 490 millimeters. But here, as you can see, it's 245. So that's exa exact half. So it's basically kind of wrapping it, it, wrapping it around half. Now let's say you don't want to wrap all of the layers. Maybe we just want to wrap the brick layer and then the rest of these insulation layers we want them to stay well, just uh, regularly as they would. So what you can do for that is just go here and select the wall again, go into edit type, go back into structure, into edit, and here under wraps you would basically uncheck each layer uh, uh, un and leave only the brick layer turned on. So if we leave wraps on for this one, click OK and apply. As you can see now, only the brick layer and or and let's maybe go to shaded. Yeah, as you can see, only the brick layer will wrap and the rest of these will stay just as regular layers. Same thing goes here with the window. So that's basically how you use these external wraps. Now you can do internal wraps. So let's go or interior wraps. So here we have an option for interior. Let's hit OK, apply. So now as you can see, only the interior layers are wrapping or you can go back into edit and you can do both. Hit OK, apply, and there we go. So now as you can see, the exterior layer is wrapping, but both the interior layer is wrapping as well. So you can use these options to modify the way that Revit will interact with these openings. And you can basically play around with the doors or windows and they will just kind of uh, pop from one side to the other. Now the same thing goes here for the wall ends. So let me just move this off to the side, uh, select the wall again, go into edit type, under structure, go into edit and here we have the option for wrapping at ends and here you can do exterior one. So if I click OK, apply, there you go, the brick will basically wrap around under uh, around all of the exterior layers and the core and then it will stop under these interior layers. So that's basically how will it wrap. And if I go here into edit type again, structure, edit, and then I can change it maybe to interior. So basically now if I hit apply, only the interior layer will wrap up to the exterior layers. So if I go here into edit, so these are the exterior layers then we have the core and then we have the interior layers. So that's basically how wrapping works. It follows this methodology over here or this hierarchy that you set within all of the wall layers. So that's basically all of the options for wrapping and for wrapping at wall ends or at wrapping at openings. Now talking about all of these layers, let's here turn off this uh, wrapping at the exterior and let's uh, turn off wrapping here with the openings and let's just leave it as a basic uh, wall. And here let's go into edit structure and let's turn on back on these wraps. I just don't like to mess around with the settings for my projects. Okay, so here let's add another wall. So let me go here to architecture wall and this was a brick on CMU. Let's go with brick on end block on metal stud. Let's click here at the endpoint. And let's just go like this. Now, as you can see, this uh, wall is facing the wrong side, so I can just flip it around and it would look like this. So basically all of these, uh, we have one final layer over here. Then we have the brick layers that are connected and we have this insulation layer that's connected and then we have a few more layers. But this is basically how Revit uh, interacts these two walls here in a corner. But let's say you don't want these walls to interact this way. Maybe you want to have a different type of a connection. So how do you fix something like this? 
Well, for that, what you need to do is go here to the Modify tab, and then here under Geometry, we have a tool called Wall Joins. Now, this tool allows us to change the joins for each wall, so or for each wall join. So if you just select this tool, first what you need to do is you need to hover over either a wall join or a wall end, so it will highlight with this rectangle. Now, once you highlight a wall, you just need to click once, and now you will have a few options here. So first, uh, here you have an option to toggle between uh, these walls. So if I go here to next, as you can see, it kind of flips around. So now this structural core is going all the way to here. Now if I flip it again, now this structural core is going through the other wall. So basically this is what we can flip. Now this is only if we have the but option uh, turned on. But if we go with meter, it will kind of go with a straight diagonal line. Now, as you can see in this example, it doesn't really work that well just because we have uh, such a complex, uh, such two such complex walls that are interacting. But if you had maybe a more basic wall or something like that, maybe this would be one of the options. Also, you have the square off option, so it looks like this. As you can see now, this uh, exterior uh, layer is missing. So if we can go again next just to switch around the hierarchy if that's something that you want to do. So you can play around with these for now. I'm going to stick with the uh, but uh, option. Now also you have the option here to display and then uh, use view settings or you can do go with a clean join or we can go with don't clean join and then it looks like this. So basically one wall is going all the way to, to the other side and then the other wall is starting from here. So that's basically uh, what that would look like. Now I usually like use view settings to leave it at as is. Now we also have this disallow join, but I'm going to be talking about that in a different project. So let's just cancel out of this command by going to the modify tool or by hitting the escape key a couple of times. Now here I have this separate project, and if I zoom in over here, you're going to notice that we have this exterior curtain wall, here we have this corner mullion, and here we have an interior wall. Now this project is something that I'm working on, as I mentioned in the beginning of this video, this can be found on my Patreon, first link in the description, I show you how to create this uh, office building project, and I'm showing you how to produce all necessary building documentation for an office building, a multi-story office building. But for now, let's just zoom in over here to this corner and here we have a problem. So this wall is going all the way to the center of this curtain wall and it certainly wouldn't look like this in real life. Now if I go ahead and uh, disconnect this and let's say we don't want this to go to the center of this, I actually want it to go here to the edge. And as you can see the edge will highlight but once I release my uh, left mouse button, there we go, it immediately snaps to the center of the wall. This is just because Revit defaults to this uh, center uh, of, the, of the wall and the center of these two curtain walls, so it looks like that. But if you want to kind of escape this problem, what you can do is go here to the Modify tab and then go with the uh, wall joins, come to this join, select it, and then go disallow join. Now it basically tells Revit that you don't want to have a join here and now you can move this all the way to the edge and Revit doesn't look at these walls as two joint elements, it looks at, uh, at them as two completely independent elements and then you can kind of modify it uh, manually and set it up in a correct position like I did over here. So that's why would you, why you would use the disallow join option. If I go back to this uh, project over here and if I were to go with wall joins, select this and go disallow join, it would look like this and it's completely silly so this is not what you want to have. So let's go back and let's hit the modify key to escape that tool. Okay, so with that out of the way, let's go and let's play around with the uh, facade, uh, with the brick facade layers or uh, the brick facade patterns. So let me go here into the 3D view, maybe spin around a little bit, and here as you can see we have a brick facade. Now this is a, I don't know how do you call this, uh, uh, layout, brick layout, but you have this pre pretty standard brick layout. Now let's say you want to have a bit of a different brick layer, uh, layout in a certain area of a wall. 
So what you can do in that case, so the, the easiest way of approaching this problem would be to go to the Modify tab and here we have the option on the Geometry tab again we have the split face option. Now SF is the shortcut for this tool but let's select it for now and then you have to select the face. So let's select the face of this wall so as you can see the whole wall will highlight select that there we go now let's zoom in and let's play around and let's do a simple rectangle now as you can see Revit will highlight each uh, each brick layer which is really cool it's a really cool option and let's say we want to go from here and then let's grab three brick layers and end up over here so we have a different uh, we want to have a different brick layout in this area now if I hit finish you're going to notice that nothing happens but but if I can uh, play around or move around, you will see that we have a different uh, face here. Now I can select just that face without the rest of the wall. So that basically means that we have split this face in half. Now what we can do, or on into two faces. Now what we can do is go here to the uh, paint tool, start that up, and here we have under brick, we have the common course. Yeah, okay, so this is the common course but let's add the soldier course for this new uh, phase that we have created so just check here uh, brick soldier, soldier course or you can al always search here for your material and then let's hover over just this face so make sure you're not selecting the whole wall but just this uh, face over here just like that you click once and there you go now we can escape this and as you can see here we have a different brick layout in this area and that's what you want to have so that's how can you change the uh, brick uh, layout for your walls on just on the facade just in certain areas and you can always turn this on to realistic or render it and it will appear as such. So this is a really cool option how to kind of play around with your uh, facade brick patterns. Okay, and one more thing that I would like to uh, show you is how can you play around with reveals on your walls. So for reveals, you don't have to go here to architecture and then wall and then wall reveal and then you can place it. Let's say you want to have a reveal on a certain uh, part of your wall uh, that's repeating at the certain heights. So what you can do in that case, let's just get rid of this reveal. And then what you can do is you can select your wall, go here into edit type, go into structure, edit that structure, and here I'm going to move this off to the side and open up the preview window. Now once we open up the preview window and change the view from a floor plan view to the section view, we get all of these commands. So as you can see when it's in a floor plan view they are grayed out, but when we are in the uh, section view they are visible. Now what we can do is we can add reveals so you can just add reveals over here so you just can go and add a reveal we can go with a default profile or you can use one of these I'm just going to go with the default profile and here you can do a distance offset let's go with distance of I don't know like 200 and hit apply okay so we have one reveal here then you can open this back up go add and let's add one at 600 and of course you can uh, just play around with maybe uh, are you measuring from the base or from the top or are you on the exterior side or the interior side you can do an offset or things like that and here you set the height either from base or top now I'm just going to hit apply, OK, and there we go, we have these two reveals. And now if I hit OK, apply, and OK again, there you go, we have these two reveals. And if I start a new wall, if I select that same uh, wall layer, it's going to include, oops, this is not the one. <laughs> Okay, let's go. Is it this one? Yeah, there we go. And as you can see, it will include those two uh, reveals on the bottom. So that's how you can create automatic reveals on your wall. And there can, they can only be horizontal reveals. You can only add horizontal ones automatically. And for the vertical ones, you have to go here to wall and then wall reveal. Go with the vertical one and then you can place it, well, wherever you want. There you go. And then it will look like this.
Okay, so there you go. Those are some of the wall hacks that I wanted to share with you. I hope that this was useful and that you have learned something new. So thank you for watching. Make sure to subscribe, like, and share this video. If you want to check out those advanced courses, like if you want to uh, learn how to build this office building in Revit, it's a really complex project, and I show you everything step by step, how to build each phase, how to adjust the curtain wall, and all of that good stuff. So if this is something you're interested in check out my patreon first link in the description okay so that's pretty much it and i'll uh, be back with a, another useful revit tutorial in a few days thank you for watching and have a nice day